Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the Treasury Direct's debt to the penny calculator. I've done this one a little bit different tonight to show you something. Uh, we're mainly going to be talking about the silver supply, but I wanted to talk about a few things before we do that. Now, this is actually going to be looking at the Bush period. What I did was uh, I took the inaugural time frame, roughly. I'm just going by uh, the 1st of January of the uh, new president's inaugural year. For Bush, that was going to be January 1st, 2001. You can see here we were around 5.6, 5.7 trillion on the national debt when Bush took office. Now, if we go and look at the end of his term, we just put it eight years later at uh, January 1st of uh, two, 2008, I'm sorry, 2009. Well, it gives you the figure from 2008, but you can see about 10.7 trillion. So 5.7 trillion, 10.7 trillion, close to doubling, not quite a double there. But the thing I wanted to show you here is uh, how rapid we rapid of an increase we had during that last year. So if you remember, uh, the financial crisis began to hit at the end of 2007 and really accelerated through 2008. And so we'll go from... Um, the beginning of 2008, we're talking a, a figure of about 9.2 trillion on the national debt, and then you can see at the end of that year, we were talking about 10.7 trillion. So it added 1.5 trillion dollars to the national debt that year, and that included TARP and uh, all other kinds of scams. And uh, so, what does that mean for this year? Well, if the presidential pattern holds, which I think it will then percentage-wise, that means we're going to be adding $3 trillion this year, and that's going to put us way over the top of $20 trillion in the national debt. So that's just something I wanted to throw out there. Now, speaking of the TARP bailout, I was actually going to pull up, just uh, for comparison purposes, the uh, silver price adjusted for inflation. And it just so happens when I pulled this up here, look at that. Uh, I put in the search for Fed inflation calculator. It always takes you to the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. And look at the smiling face we have there. President Neil Kashkari. Remember this guy? Remember me talking about cash and carry? One of the guys involved in the bailout scams. Look at that here. Neil Kashkari took office as president and chief executive officer of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis on January 1st, 2016. So they've recycled this crook. Uh, if you remember, he went and hid in the hills of California <laughs> thinking maybe he was going to get prosecuted. Well, nothing happened to any of the bankers. He's back and he's at the Fed. So that is uh, really hilarious. But the reason why I brought this page up was just to show you the inflation adjusted price of uh, the silver top. So we're going to be looking at silver supply and we know that silver hit 50 bucks in 1979. So just to give you an idea of an inflation adjusted price we need to hit to break that uh, this year, we have to do 2015 because we don't have that, that 2016 in there. But uh, if we click the button and calculate, you can see that gives us $163 an ounce. That's the high we need to break to go into new highs. Now, most of the commodities have already gone into new highs. Uh, I could pull up oil. I could pull up just about any commodity you could name, including gold. And uh, they've already made new highs from the 70s highs, not silver. And inflation adjusted wise, they have as well. But for silver, we're talking $163. That's what the price is going to be if silver makes a new inflation adjusted high. That's crazy. So I wanted to touch on this story real quick here. Uh, Cripsy has moved out of their old building. They're nowhere to be found. Uh, a big Vern, uh, if we go in here and, and uh, type Cripsy Twitter, um, we haven't really heard from Big Vern for quite some time. You can see the last tweet uh, from Big Vern was back on December 16th, and we haven't had a tweet uh, since then. The tweet before that was December 9th and then November 24th, but you can see 
in the month of November and October, you can see he was tweeting, you know, every three days or four days, and it goes back um, for uh, that was the pattern for a very long time. Uh, so this guy apparently has gone into hiding. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, so that's it's just a matter of time, and there's a lot of price discrepancies um, on the. Uh, Cripsy coin prices, uh, you can pull up any number of coins here. Uh, if you pull up the trending coins, let's say if you pull up Bitbean here, you can see up 86% and you think, wow, that's an amazing return. But you can see here that this is skewed because it's an average of all the exchanges. And you can see that that, that coin is quoted at 1426 on Cripsy, 535, 446. So it's a threefold what it is on the other exchanges. What does that mean? Well, it means that people are trying desperately searching for a coin that they can actually get off the exchange. So um, things are winding down at Cripsy. I expect to see the doors close very, very soon. Now, before we get to the silver supply chart, I wanted to take you over to an AGQ chart uh, just to show you um, something you can play for paper. Uh, AGQ is the ultra silver. It's a, a triple, I believe it's a triple silver uh, long. And you can see that it, it hit a high. Of, they split these multiple times. It's got built in decay, so they just die. But you can see it was above 700. We're down around 27. Now, this, this thing is obviously, at some point, if you time it right, is going to have an explosive move. And if you like to play paper, um, then it's at some point it's going to be a can't lose proposition unless uh, the can't lose side of it is that they renege on it and just to show you an example from my life here um, I still holding my position on the the South African Rand and again I chose to short the South African Rand uh, based on a cross of the Japanese yen and the reason why I chose that was because I felt that the yen had actually been, you can see this is the move here, I, I felt that the yen had been devalued so much that it was due at least for a correction. It would probably hold its own, whereas the dollar had uh, rallied in value so much that I wasn't really willing to do a cross of the dollar. But uh, what happened with me recently with this uh, South African Rand Japanese yen cross was that uh, I got in in June on this. Uh, let's pull up the daily. Uh, I got in on in June um, adding contracts as it went. Uh, I would uh, either add contracts breaking into new lows or I would add uh, on the rallies. And you can see we had a big move and another big move. Now, recently I contacted my broker because I logged into my account and I saw that basically about 35% of my account had been drained for what were called rollover fees. I actually had to call the broker and confront them and ask them, uh, what's going on here? Uh, why am I paying? And I, I didn't do the math, but it comes to like 10,000% uh, a year interest or 25,000% a year interest or something. Uh, and they gave me initially an explanation of, well, our interest rate carrying cost on the South African Rand has increased significantly. But uh, ultimately, they uh, ended up refunding the money because um, it, it was not legitimate. But I, I had to call them on it, and it actually could have put me in a forced liquidation position. Now, why do I bring that up? The reason I bring that up is, is yes, you can make a tremendous amount of money uh, doing things like these uh, ETFs and things like that. But there's no guarantee that they're not going to steal the money. And what I found, for the most part, in my life is that when you're right and you're really, really right, that's when they cheat you. So that just a word of warning for people who want to play paper markets. Again, that's just a little tiny uh, bit of my portfolio, just really something to play around with. So let's get to the main story. This is going to be the silver supply. And this is the video from uh, Vision Victory, Daniel over at Vision Victory. And I think this is a really important video. Uh, about how silver is ultimately going to really, really run. And I'm just going to play it and then make some comments as we go along. This is going to be the most important video you watch. 
because what we are about to show you is undeniable evidence that points to one commodities shortage, literally tearing apart the markets. This is going to happen within the next year. Due to some foul play by industry insiders and misinformation by the financial media, we believe silver is likely the most undervalued asset available to investors today. Over the past decade, the ETF SLV has siphoned off a significant amount of demand from both the physical silver market and the mining shares themselves. The COMEX has also regularly been used to manipulate the precious metals through margin increases, massive selling during holiday hours, and the fact that the futures market just doesn't have the metal to support all of the trading that goes on. In the end, this is going to be about supply disruption in the face of surging demand for monetary purposes. It is true, silver is used for many industrial purposes, healthcare, pharmaceutical, water treatment, solar, electrical grids, vehicles, phones, computers, bandages, RFID chips, high-tech weaponry, and thousands of everyday uses. But the biggest increase in demand we are seeing is coming from investment demand. On the supply side, silver and many metals and minerals are experiencing serious supply destruction. In a silver producing country like Canada, silver production is down 31% year over year. The SRS Rocco report just shared new data from the USGS showing silver production in the US is down 20% in September compared to September of 2014. Year to date, Mexico is down 4%, Chile is down 4%, and Australia is down a whopping 41% year to date for silver production. Only 20% of silver comes from primary silver producers. The rest comes from zinc, copper, gold, and other metal mines. This is important because right now we are seeing a situation where primary silver producers are now selling silver for market prices, and in some cases below the cost of production itself. We are already seeing major zinc mines shut down operations this year in Australia and Ireland, with even more planned closures for the next year. Bloomberg recently reported record zinc shortages. In Canada, billion-dollar giant HUD Bay in their latest investor conference call literally stated that one of their most profitable mines, the 777 mine, was now approaching the end of its life. This is important to note because even in the face of falling demand, commodity prices can rise if there is a supply shortage. The equation is simple. Is supply shrinking faster than demand? However, in Silver's case, supply is shrinking dramatically from both future expectations from silver mines, silver exploration, and other metal mines, and demand is soaring due to its monetary history. Here are the raw numbers for total supply for the past five years. This includes mine production and recycled silver. Hidden in those numbers is scrap supply which is in a full-blown collapse. In 2011, 258 million ounces came from scrap. By 2014, the number was down to 168 million ounces. Now I'll stop it there because if you remember when I did the silver cycle video, talking about how silver has maintained a price for junk, uh, roughly three, two, three, and four dollars above spot price, uh, that means that for a significant period of time during the year 2015, uh, the silver cycle was broken. So this scrap supply number, I expect probably, it, I would not be surprised if 2015 came in with this dropping down to around 100 million ounces for scrap supply. Falling three consecutive years, mine supply went from 754 million ounces to 819 million ounces completely filling that void. However, as of 2015, we can clearly see that the mine supply will begin to fall for silver. At the same point in time, recycled silver continues to fall through the floor. Demand for jewelry, silverware, and industrial fabrication, all of these are still higher than they were in 2010. Where we are seeing a major increase is in coin and bar demand, which has exploded from 87 million ounces in 2009 to 245 million ounces in 2013 and 196 million ounces last year. Unlike many other commodities, silver is not seeing a decrease in demand. It does have a falling supply though, including its future pipeline 
where exploration for the most part has been halted industry-wide. With supply tight and future supply shrinking, one only has to wonder if demand will let up in silver, or if what we have seen thus far for its increase in demand will continue or even see a tsunami of demand in 2016. FutureMoneyTrends.com sees three trends in 2016 that will cause a surge in physical demand for silver, which will cause a supply shortage and present investors and speculators with what will be one of the greatest commodity plays of all time. One, low prices. As legendary investor Rick Rule is often heard saying, the cure for low prices is low prices. Physical demand has been surging as silver makes new lows in its current bear market. With the world so bearish on commodities, silver will likely see newer lows in 2016, perhaps to 12, 10, or even as low as $8 an ounce for silver. Prior to setting new all-time highs between now and this time next year, at $8 an ounce of silver, you'll have primary silver mines running skeleton crews. And if silver does touch $8, that will mean the other metals and minerals like zinc and copper will be seeing massive layoffs, which in some cases is already starting at current prices. Two, war. War is always inevitable, but in 2016, it may be imminent. China is imploding. Russia needs higher oil prices, and the US monetary fixes since 2009 were all suicidal. And the best distraction from bad policy during an election year is war. We are already seeing skirmishes in the Middle East and a renewed sense of nationalism and a 9-11 war footing here in the U.S. since San Bernardino and Paris. Three, bonds. The bond market is twice the size of the stock market and a real crisis is here, with central banks around the world being the biggest holders of long bonds and there will be no bids in the debt crisis. Any type of sovereign debt crisis, junk bonds or corporate will put gold at the top of headlines. And with gold, many investors will buy silver. We already know from bullion companies and the Sprott funds, investors buy the ounce, buy about 10 ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold. So it is safe to say if investors flee into gold, they will flood into silver, whose supply is much smaller. The above ground available supply of gold is north of 5 billion ounces. For silver, it is estimated around 1 billion ounces. However, we take the position that coins like the American Eagle are as good as gone. So the number could be far less for silver. The perfect catalyst for silver to roar through the $50 an ounce mark is here, and it is happening in 2016. Demand is surging, supply is contracting, and there are three separate but very likely catalysts to bring a renewed wave of demand for silver coming in 2016. Even one of them making a headline could send the price of silver soaring. FutureMoneyTrends.com has just released our 2016 action. So that was a which very good video by Daniel. Uh, yeah, people criticize him. Um, I've criticized him myself because uh, I said many, many years ago that the miners are going to be big failures and he's used some of the mining advertisements. I have the same criticism of Sprott and others. These people have to make a living. I understand that. But uh, for me, it's a matter of integrity. Uh, if I think something's going to go down, I'm not going to tell you to buy it. So uh, that is a fascinating take. Uh, we could be set up here for an absolute explosion in price. Just uh, the $50 price would be an amazing run. But I really honestly believe uh, he's predicting the $50 price will be broken this year. That's a bold call. Um, I'm predicting that the $163 price will be broken. I'm not going to say that it's this year, but I think that it's fairly soon. And we'll talk to you next time.